come out showing that Roundup causes genotoxical damage. The Monsanto paper showed us all those things. As more information comes into the case, the knives get sharper and sharper. We knew that it caused cancer, but we didn't know that Monsanto knew. My cancer is called cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's. Monsanto made a choice to not put a cancer warning on the label. The common joke out in the country is that it's so safe you can drink it. You just saw a clip from Into the Weeds, Dwayne Lee Johnson versus Monsanto Company, a powerful documentary that follows a David versus Goliath story of one man's fight against an agrochemical giant. Well, joining us today to tell us more about Lee's story is the Canadian filmmaker who directed this film, Jennifer Baitual. Uh, welcome to the show, Jennifer. Hello. Uh, we want to dive into this uh, the story that you cover so, so well in your doc. And the film follows, as Jess said, Dwayne Lee Johnson. And he sues the Monsanto Corporation after exposure to their herbicide glyphosate that led to a devastating battle with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Can you tell us a little bit about Lee's story? Well, Lee was a groundskeeper in uh, for the Benicia school district in California and he did he was also a pest control manager so he had to you know one of his jobs was spraying all of the fields and the areas for weeds and uh, he was trained in how to use that project uh, that product glyphosate is used residentially in something called roundup which many people may have in their garden sheds and I hope after seeing this film they might get rid of it but uh, Lee used a stronger concentration and was was called Ranger Pro and was very much trained how to use it however he had an accident once where a hose sort of came undone and he was showered all over his body in 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 Roundup in Ranger Pro and got soaked to the skin down his he had a Tyvek suit on, which is a protective suit, but that even got wet. And of course, because he's at work and he lives far away, he couldn't change. He changed no. a shirt, he washed his face, but he kept his wet pants on for the rest of the day, and then a number of months later noticed a lesion on his knee. And the interesting thing is, at that point, he didn't call a lawyer. He didn't know what caused it. It took mm -hmm. a long time for them to figure out what it was. But he did call Monsanto to say, um, has there ever been any evidence of something like this happening to somebody who has had this kind of exposure? And nobody ever called him back. Wow. So eventually there is a legal battle, you know, that's held to hold Monsanto um, sort of accountable, I suppose, keep them responsible for using the controversial Roundup, as you mentioned. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, you know, I will say uh, I love my job. I've been doing it now for nearly 30 years. And and I learn so much on every film. So mm -hmm. mass torts is essentially the um, a, a big number of plaintiffs against one or a few small groups, like normally a, a corporation. And so the mass torts uh, suit here against Monsanto, now Bayer, because Bayer bought Monsanto, um, was very much about how, how do we take a massive yeah. um multinational corporation to court and there really are not very many options for that it's not like if you can first of all you have to you know know that something's been done wrong you then have to prove what the wrong is then you have to prove that they did the wrong and you have to do it in court uh, before anything happens at all and we're talking millions and millions of dollars to mount a case like this so even though mass torts is money damages only which you know, you would assume, like, if I went over and punched my neighbor, I would get an assault charge. But, they, you know, the, 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 the heads of these corporations are not going to jail. They're just getting sued. So money damages are have limitations, I suppose, is, is, is one of the biggest um, problems. However, what mass torts do is allow a working person to have the key to the courtroom. And these lawyers spend millions of dollars on spec to take on these cases, because of course, if they lose, they don't get anything mm -hmm. and they're in debt. But if they win, then they can create this kind of, or bring, bring in this kind of justice with these money damages. So far, Bayer has paid out $16 billion um, to settle these lawsuits. There were over 100,000 lawsuits in the US alone.
So listen, Jennifer, you say you learned something on every film. You said you learned uh, something about glyphosate in this project uh, that shocked you. What was that? Well, you know, I mean, I'm an environmentalist, obviously, like from my past films and stuff. I have never used a pesticide in my life. And I learned that glyphosate is the world's most widely used herbicide. And what that means is what was kind of mind boggling. Like we're not just talking about people using it in their lawns or on farmers fields. It's, it's very heavily used in agriculture, uh, but it is used in uh, parks, cemeteries, golf courses, beaches, railway lines, beside the high side of highways, hydro lines to keep weeds from encroaching. You can see why people would do it. And of course, if glyphosate is considered to be safe, and believe me, it was marketed at one point as being safe enough to drink, as safe as table salt, people think that this is okay to use. It is sprayed aerially on forests for plantations of spruce and pine, to the point where it will kill everything below except those little seedlings that are meant to grow to be cut down in these plantations. But what ends up happening in those ecosystems is that everything dies. And, and the systemic ecosystem effects, um, I think, are something that a lot of people have known for a long time. Somebody like me uh, learned a lot about by making this film. Hmm. So ultimately, Lee won his case. He was monetarily compensated. So how did he feel about the outcome? And how is Lee doing today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the big challenges during the trial was the fact that, you know, when, when you have discovery in a trial like that, which is sort of the research phase, there were over 15 million documents that had to be gone through. And you can just imagine that's kind of impossible for anybody to do, right? Um, but so it ends up becoming artificial intelligence, computers that, uh, you know, analyze this language and do word searches and try to find the truth about what's happened. And the Monsanto papers that came out as the result of discovery of this trial showed a lot of corporate malfeasance in the sense of like, oh, we're going to malign independent scientists who question glyphosate. We're going to ghostwrite our own studies. We're going to really lobby the Environmental Protection Agency. And, and that was shocking. And of course, Lee had to deal with all of that during the trial as those allegations were proven through these documents. Um, he, he ultimately won. He, his settlement was greatly redu reduced, which happens almost all the time. But he said from the very beginning, I don't care about the money. I want the label to be changed because I want all the other people who are, have been injured by this product to have their day in court or to be settled. And I also want people to be able to make their own choice about whether, whether to use it. So he's a humble guy. He's a, he's a homebody. He doesn't want to be in the spotlight, mm. but he knew that he had to do it for this story. Wow. And his was the bellwether case, really, that, that, that then allowed 100,000 other cases right. uh, to be heard. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. The film is called Into the Weeds and is out tomorrow across Canada. Be sure to check it out. We'll be right back.